One feature that is really missing from the Raspberry Pi Pico is networking. Computer networking is so pervasive these days that it's pretty much a requirement for most things. And whilst there are some projects that you can create which don't need a connection to the network, adding networking provides so much more opportunities, such as providing a way to communicate with your project using a phone, having it interface with your home automation, or becoming part of the Internet of Things. There are some options for adding networking connectivity. In an earlier video, I've explained how you can connect a Pico to a Raspberry Pi. Whilst that doesn't provide the actual network stack on the Pico, it means that you could have a programming running on the Pi which could relay information to the internet if required. I've also used the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, which has the RP2040 and wireless on the same board. In this video, I'm going to look at a different solution, which is a Pico wireless from Pimeroni. It's a Wi-Fi backpack device. It has wireless networking provided by an ESP32 and it's also got a micro SD card reader. By backpack, this means that you can connect it to the underside of the Pico. This does mean that you cannot access the rest of the GPIO pins on the Pico, but I'll show some workarounds for that. I've also done a bit of research on the minimum pins needed to use this, and I'll explain a bit more about that later. I'll be using the supplied examples for this video, although I do hope to create another video in future showing some more practical uses. So please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified about my future videos. So for this video, I'm just going to show some example code using the MicroPython examples that are provided by Pimeroni. To get these, we go to their website and find the Pico Wireless. If you scroll down, it gives a link to their custom MicroPython UF2. Now this is an alternative version of the MicroPython. It's based on the same one that's used in the Pico, but it has their additional libraries on it for a variety of different products, not just the wireless. In this case, you just want the standard Pimeroni Pico, whichever version of a MicroPython.uf2 file. If you download that and transfer that to the Pico in place of the standard MicroPython, and that's got all the libraries already set up for you. And then if you go back, there's also a link to MicroPython examples, which you can get by clicking here. And this one goes straight to the examples directory. Now you can also find this if you've just gone to the Pimeroni GitHub site, and it's in Pimeroni Pico. But the thing you need to do is not go in the examples directory but into MicroPython first and then the examples directory and that's back to where we were before. If you look for the Pico wireless directory and then there's various different examples that can be used. Looked at two, one's the RGB HTTP which allows you to set the colour of the RGB LED using a HTTP request and also cheer lights, which uses the cheer lights setup, which is a, allows you to set the RGB light LED on the board to the same as millions of other computers around the world. And I'll explain that in a mo bit more detail later. I'm going to look at the RGB HTTP example first. You need three files for this. So there's RGB HTTP py is the code itself. The ppwhttp provides the HTTP connections library and then secrets.py is used if you're going to connect to your home network you would put the SSID and your passkey into there. You need to download those all to the Pico so to save that, you would just go File, Save As, and then you choose MicroPython device, and you need to add it into there. Uh, it's already saved on there. And then you can just run it by pressing the Run button. It 
connects to my home network and then you can connect to it using the address provided and then you can set this to a, a value say uh, these are RGB so red if we set it to 255 80 and 0 and then set the LED and that gives you a, a sort of greeny orange colour and you can change these to whatever values you want and whenever you press set LED so if we do that it'll just give you red if you put that at 0, 255 that'll give you green and then lastly if we did 255 there that will give you blue and here's the second example that I'm going to show. I've just opened the file cheerlights.py and what this is going to do is going to connect to this API which is at thinkspeak.com and there's various other ones available and you can then set the colour by tweeting a word. So if I just load that and you do need the ppwhttpy and secrets file as well. I'll save that onto the MicroPython. And then if we run that. And it let's connect to the Wi Fi network first. And then it comes up. And it, this is just the color that happens to be set at the moment. So here's the cheerlights.com website. And there's an API that can tell you all about this, um, about the different devices and how you can get them. So you can just query these web pages. You can use MQTT, or the example I use is that you can also tweet. And so this is quick search on cheer lights I've got a th another window open so if I send a tweet so if you just tweet to cheer lights and then give it a color that you want to set it you'll see that I've sent a message to Twitter just saying setting cheer lights to red and then give it a few seconds and now my LED on the Pico wireless has now changed to red as well. Uh, also that other devices all around the world, anything that's using this Cheerlights API will also have changed colour. So one of the things I said earlier was that when you put the backpack on it makes these pins hard to get to. So there's a couple of different workarounds on this. Uh, the first one, uh, the one I've been using for some of this testing, is to use the Pico Omnibus, which allows you to put two backpacks onto a PCB with the Pico on it. And you can either use it as two backpacks or you could just connect jumper wires to the second deck to be able to connect two devices. Or alternatively, one of the things I did earlier when I was doing some initial testing is to put this onto a breadboard and you can put them alongside each other and then you'd have to wire the pins together. Now you don't need to wire all the pins and this is also useful if you want to get some more of the GPIO ports free because just looking at this image, this is taken from the Pimeroni website, you'll see that if you just accept all the pins in use then there's, there's not that many empty GPIO ports. But the reason that there's so many on here is because it's got two feel well, it's got three functionalities basically. You've got the wireless networking capability, you've also got the micro SD, and then you've got the button and LED. So in this case I'm using the button and LED, I'm using the wireless, but I'm not using the micro SD card. And that means that some of these ports are not used, and you can see some of the ones on here so you you have to bear in mind this is designed to sort of fold on itself if this was a printed piece of paper you'd fold it round so 
these pins here are connected to these pins here. So you don't need these power connections. The Pico Wireless just uses the 3.3 volt supply. Some of these, these are SPI data used for the micro SD, which isn't needed for this. You do need the mozzie and the SPI clock and the MISO connections there. And you need the uh, chip select over at the other side and the busy pins. And they're the only pins that really you need. There's the reset pin and, and switch A. So if you're not using the switch, you don't need to use this one here. The RGB LED is actually controlled from the ESP32, which is connected via the SPI. So it doesn't have its own dedicated pin. Another feature of the Pico Wireless is that on the back of the Pico Wireless, which is what it's showing here, then there are some of these PCB tracks that can be cut if you wanted to permanently disable these. Um, so you could just cut through some of these and that will free up those ports as well. Or if you're creating your own custom PCB, basically you just need to concentrate on the pins that are required for your particular project. That's it as far as this video. It's just really an introduction to the Pico Wireless. As I said, there are other ways you can add wireless capability to the Pico, but this one is a reasonable price and is quite a useful thing. So the, the only thing to be aware of is there's no breakout on it for the pins, um, but there are ways around that. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, if you have done, please give it a thumbs up and that will help to share this video around so that other people get to see it as well. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so uh, because I'll be having other projects in future which you might want to see and make sure you click on the notification icon and enable that as well so that you get notified when the videos come out. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.